Okay, this lesson is for uh, section 2.2 .2 again. This is going to be part 2 of solving different types of equations. Most of this is going to be a review of the video beforehand, so if you want to just stay tuned for just problems numbers 1 and 2, the rest of this is pretty much a review. You can check your answers. Make sure you key these though. Like So go through, check your work with the key, make sure you know how to do the problem. Only play this back if you actually need to see it, but there are some tricky questions on here, um, and I just want to make sure that you know how to do all of them. Okay, so first question here, solving literal equations, usually they give you guys trouble um, because you're not really sure what to do when you have all these variables in there. But remember, you can't do anything that you couldn't normally do with just numbers. So if I have a variable in the denominator like I do here, oops, sorry, it's Z we're solving for, um, I need to get that out of the denominator. I can't just multiply by Z though because right now it's attached, right? Z and W are attached. So Z plus W is going to be multiplied on both sides. and when I do that, on the right hand side, I'm left with just z because this cancels out. On the left hand side, I have w times z plus w. Now, some of you guys stop right here and you leave your answer like this, but notice how you have two z's. Can't do that. You need to get z completely isolated, meaning you only see one z, and that's you know on one side of the equation by itself. So, um, instead of just subtracting z, this would be illegal, right? Because it's again attached to the w here. Um, we need to distribute, so I'm going to do that first. I get wz plus w squared equaling z. And then now I'm free to move that term over the other side by subtracting. So I have w squared equals z minus wz. I'm now going to factor the z out of here. I'm left with z times 1 minus w. And now it's really easy to isolate the z. I just get rid of this entire term here. 1 minus w, this is going to cancel and I'm left with w squared over 1 minus w equaling z. In the second question, this I think is going to give people a lot of trouble when they see a question like this, because um, you're used to using or seeing a quadratic um, in terms of x, but now we're solving for y in terms of the other letters here. So this time, you're going to notice that this is a quadratic actually, because you see y squared. You also see just a linear term here, and then this can be treated because you're not using y as your variable, right? Or x as your variable, I'm sorry. This can be treated like a constant. So I'm going to just move this over and rewrite this. So xy squared minus 5y minus 3x equals 0. So the tricky part here is recognizing that this is just a quadratic, okay? Look at, you have an a term of x, a b term of negative 5, and a c term of negative 3x. So instead of trying to like factor this or you know uh, use a different method I'm just going to go straight into the quadratic formula here so using these as a B and C I have uh, 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 B squared which is 25 in this case minus 4 times a which is X times C which is negative 3x all over 2 times a which is X Okay, so it looks weird because you're not used to seeing a variable inside the quadratic formula, but uh, these are the solutions now for y. So now it's just a matter of simplifying. So you have 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus, uh, that's going to be 12x squared, all over 2x. This is as far as we go. Um, this is y solved for um, in terms of the other variables. Okay, in problem two, or sorry, three, I'm going to try to factor this first. So I, I noticed that I can take a GCF out, so I'm going to do that right away. And I'm left with one minus two, two, one minus t squared. This is factorable, so I have one plus t, one minus t here. And I'm going to get three unique solutions, t equals zero, negative one, and one. In problem number four, so this is a radical equation here, remember you want to isolate your radical. So I'm going to isolate the 3 plus 2t radical. So I move this over and I'm left with this. I'm going to square now both sides. I drop the radical now, so it's 3 plus 2t. On the right hand side, again, I'm going to use that pattern, remember we talked about this yesterday. When we FOIL this, you can take the first term, FOIL, or square that, take the last term, square that. The inside term is going to be double the product of the two terms, so 2xy. So here I'm going to take the first term, 1, take the last term, and that's just going to be negative 1 plus 4t. Um, I'm going to put that in parentheses though. 
and then the middle term is going to be 2 times this times this. Well, 2 times that is just going to be negative 2 times negative 1 plus 4t. Alright, now I'm going to try to isolate this radical again. So I can subtract this whole term over the other side, or I can split it up and just start to simplify. The 1 and the negative 1 are going to cancel. So if I bring that over, I'm left with 3 minus 2t equaling negative 2 times radical negative 1 plus 4t. Alright, now at this point, um, you could divide out negative 2 here, but if you do that, you end up with a fraction over here, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and square both sides. So when I square both sides, the right-hand side becomes positive 4 times negative 1 plus 4t. And the left-hand side becomes 9 minus 12t plus 4t squared. And again, you can use, when here you're foiling this, because it's a perfect square, you just use that pattern right here again. Alright, now I just have a simple quadratic that I'm going to solve. So 4t squared, um, let's see, this is on the right-hand side, negative 4 plus 16t. Bring that over the other side, you get negative 28t, and then uh, plus 13 equals 0. So I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to 52 and add to negative 28. This is factorable. Negative 26 and negative 2 will multiply to 52 and add up to negative 28. So you could just put that right into the quadratic formula also if you're not really sure to do that, but I think it's probably faster just to uh, factor this. So 4t squared minus 26t minus 2t plus 13 equals 0. Factoring out of 2t, I'm left with 2t minus 13. And here I'm going to pull out a negative 1, so I have 2t minus 13 as well. So I have two factors. My linear factors here are 2t minus 1 and 2t minus 13. I solve when I get t equals 1 half and t equals 13 halves. Okay, remember in radical equations you always need to check your solutions. So if we go back here and we check this, um, let's try 1 half. So check the 1 half here, I get 3 plus 1 plus negative 1 plus 2, and that gives me 2 plus radical 1 equaling 1. So this doesn't work. 1 half won't actually work. So that doesn't work. Try 13 halves. So we have 3 plus 13 halves, 13 plus Radical negative 1 plus 4 times 13 halves is going to be 26. And here we get 4 plus radical 25 is 5. This also doesn't work. So, okay, 13 halves, 1 half don't work. There's actually no solution to this. Sorry we did all that work just to find out that there's no solution. So much fun. Alright, next problems. Uh, let's see here, we can use the nth root property here, so subtract that 16 over, and then take the fourth root of both sides. Remember that this is going to be positive or negative, 4, 3, 3. So we get two unique solutions here, x equals 2 plus or minus the fourth root of 3. In number 6, I wrote this is not a typo, because um, once you subtract that over to your side, I want you to make sure that you recognize you're taking the fourth root here of a negative number. So when you solve this, this has no real solutions. So we would write no real solutions. So we're not dealing with complex solutions quite yet. Alright, now, next page, number seven. If you want, you can cross multiply here. That would work. You could also try to get common denominators and then set the numerators equal. In either case, it's the same idea. Um, you're still going to have, when you cross multiply, it's identical to just multiplying the, the denominator here by x plus 3 over, um, and the numerator by x plus 3, and here by x plus 5 and x plus 5. So it's literally the exact same idea. Um, and then setting the numerators equal. So I'm just going to cross multiply. So if I multiply this times this, I get x squared uh, minus x, no, plus x minus 6. And then on the other side, I have 7 times x plus 5. So alternatively, what we could have done also, like I said, is multiply by x plus 3 over x plus 3. 
on this side and multiply by x plus 5 and x plus 5. And then once we have the denominators equal, those don't matter. We just solve the numerator here. And if you look, that's identical to, left side is identical to this, right side is identical to that. So either way, it works out the same. So you get x squared minus 6x uh, 35 minus 41 equaling 0. I'm just going to stick that right into the quadratic formula. Um, when you check your solutions here, just make sure that you don't get x equals negative 5 or x equals negative 3 because obviously those are not within the domain here because you can't have your denominator equaling 0. So I'm going to do quadratic formula real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify the quadratic here. We get x equals 6 plus or minus, uh, let's break that up into root 100 root 2, so that's going to be 10 root 2 over 2. So x equals 3 plus or minus 5 root 2. So there's your solution. Now, neither of those are um, equal to negative 5 or negative 3, obviously, so those should both be in your domain, and those are your solutions. Okay, and number 8. This is one where it's not a quadratic, but we can make it into a quadratic because I see that this here uh, multiplied by 2 gives me the other exponent, and I also have a constant. So one exponent is double the other, and we have a constant term, so I'm going to do substitution and say let t equal x to the 3 fifths power. So by doing that, I can now rewrite this as 2t squared minus 3t minus 5 equals 0. And then I'm going to go ahead and factor this. So I have 2t squared minus 5t plus 2t minus 5 equaling 0. Pull out a t and pull out 1. The linear factors here are t plus 1 and 2t minus 5. Solving, I get negative 1 here and t equaling 5 halves. And then again, we're going to go back to this idea that we made this odd. We let t equal x to 3 halves, so I'm going to substitute x to 3 halves back in. And x to the 3 halves equaling 5 halves. Alright, now, we talked about this in another video. We want to raise this to a reciprocal power of 5 thirds in order to isolate x. So we have x equaling, on the other side, I can rewrite this as 3 to the negative, uh, sorry, cube root of negative 1 to the 5th power. Now, when I raise negative 1 to the 5th power, I get a negative number. I can take the cube root of a negative, so my answer here is just cube root of negative 1. Uh, let's see over here. Let's raise this to the 5 thirds power as well. So I get x equaling, and if you want to rewrite this, you can rewrite this as well as the cube root of 5 halves raised to the 5th power. And this does not have a positive and negative solution, it's just this one unique solution here, and this unique solution right here. Alright, oh, sorry, I should have simplified that. Cube root of negative 1 is just negative 1, right? So, those are your two solutions. Um, and we don't need to check either of those. We didn't introduce an extraneous solution, so those should both work. Alright, this number 9 is very similar to the last question that you guys worked on. Um, in the problem with the absolute value equations and the other uh, worksheet. So, remember there's only two cases, either, and I used I think 4 and negative 4, so let's say the absolute value of 4, and on the other side I want to put something equivalent in there. Well, I can put negative 4 in there, or I can just put 4 in there as well to write something true. So, that means either the insides are equal, or the insides are opposites. So, those are the two cases I want to set up. So, I have x minus 3 can equal 3x plus 6. And the other uh, case is that x minus 3 is equal to the opposite of 3x plus 6. So we get 2x here equaling negative 9. x equals negative 9 halves. And your other solution here, x minus 3 equals negative 3x minus 6. So uh, let's see, 4x equals negative 3. x is going to equal negative 3 fourths. So these are your two unique solutions here. Both of them do work. They are both real. Okay, last but not least, problem number 10. And this is one, again, that I want you to make sure that you're thinking about how to answer this. Because, of course, you could set up, you know, both cases x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Um, because it's either positive, you keep it the same. Or you do your opposite. The opposite of x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. And you can solve both of these. But let's just be smart about this right away. 
this is ha this has the absolute value less than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero. So if this was the absolute value of x minus three less than zero, this has of course no solution because you can't have uh, an absolute value, which is always going to be either zero or positive, right? You can't have that less than uh, zero because it can't be negative. So that in this case that would be no solution. However, we can solve it when it's equal to zero, right? There is a possibility x minus three could actually equal zero, so that's really equivalent to what we're solving here. Okay, so x minus three equals zero, we just get one solution, x equals three. This is the only case when your original equation um, holds true, or your whole, sorry, your original inequality is actually true. So the absolute value of x minus three only when x is three is less than or equal to zero. And that is the uh, review for part two. Uh, again, check your key always um, and make sure your solutions are right and then you don't have to listen to me drone on and on and on.